Hello everybody and welcome to another stupid video with me, Craig Bryant. Uh, today we're going on a ferry. Um, this ferry route I've been on actually earlier this year. Uh, we're going from Ardrossan, uh, which is in Ayrshire, North Ayrshire, I think it is, in Scotland. Uh, going over to the Isle of Arran, the beautiful Isle of Arran. Scotland in miniature, as people call it. Uh, an absolutely fabulous island. I'm just going to go for the day. Uh, I'm here having a Tim Hortons, actually, before we... Mm. That's what YouTubers do, don't they? Product placement, and then they take a sip of their coffee because apparently coffee is just like having a personality. If you say you like coffee, it's like having a hobby. Uh, that's just my little grumpiness in the morning. But lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just going to go and do the little drive here from Air um, all the way up to Ardrossan, uh, which is the harbour where um, the Calmac ferries leave from. It's going to be a little bit different to the last video. The last one was on the MV Isle of Arran. Uh, but today I'm booked on the MV Caledonian Isles, the Cali Isles as everyone calls it. Um, it's basically just a slightly larger, slightly newer version. When I say newer, it was built in 1993. Um, but it's very similar to the MV Isle of Mull, um, which is the ferry that made me fall in love with ferries. Um, that goes from Oban to the Isle of Mull, obviously. That's why it's named that. Um, and they love the design so much that they basically enlarged it slightly. Um, so it's actually, I think this has got the biggest, might have the second biggest now after the Loch Seaforth, um, but the, the biggest passenger capacity um, of all Calmac ferries. I need to check that, but I think it is a thousand passengers um, allowed on board. Um, and it just looks like a proper ferry. Um, you know, it doesn't have that little bit at the end, you know, so if you, if you know ferries, which, Lots of you do watching this, but lots of you just watch these because you're bored. Uh, but basically, most ferries now have a bit on the back that's open, and um, so you don't really get fully enclosed car decks anymore. The reason for that, lots of reasons, but main one is when you're tr transporting um, hazardous cargo um, legally, they're not allowed to be in an enclosed deck. Um, so that means that they, they have this little bit on the back, um, which is where you can park all the hazardous cargo. Um, yeah, so that that means that ferries what you think of as a ferry this beautiful enclosed thing i'm thinking of the stena europe i'm thinking of the mv isle of mull and i'm thinking of the mv caledonian isle so i can't wait to get on board so i'm just going to drive to ardrossan now and i'll see you in the queue now a party election broadcast by the conservative party Right, we have arrived at Ardrossan uh, Harbour, at Ardrossan Port. Um, I've got my stupid fluffy mic on, just ready for the ferry now as well. So hope you can hear us okay. It might sound a bit different. Uh, but yeah, that was um, that was a lovely Tim Hortons, by the way. If you ever, that was so much nicer than a McDonald's, but I hate breakfast food normally. But that was actually quite nice. Uh, but yeah, we're just waiting in lane four here, um, just for check-in because um, I know that's what some people are interested in. Um, Calmac have changed their ticketing system, um, so it's actually a lot, lot easier as the cars pull up beside me, so I've got to be less self-conscious than I am right now. Two seconds, I'm a bit distracted. So basically, um, what happened when I came here in January is I had to print off a physical um, piece of paper um, with me booking on. If you didn't do that, you would have to go inside and get your tickets actually printed off, um, which would obviously be a massive faff. Now what you can do is um, you've just got e-ticket on your phone. Um, so I just brought up my email. Um, there was a girl on the on the desk. I didn't even have to go into the desk. She was just stood outside. Uh, had a little scanner. I said, can I have your QR code? Got my emails up really quickly. Zoomed in on the QR. Bleep. Right lane four. So it is really, really easy. If that sort of thing stresses you out, um, you know, don't let that stop you doing ferry travel. It is very easy. Much easier than going to an airport like, a billion times easier so now i'm just waiting in my lane can go for a little walk about i'm going to go and have a look to see if i can see the ferry uh, coming in and um, because um this is the caledonian isles it'll be using the normal uh Ardrossan berth there's two berths here the other one's called the irish berth probably used for ferries to ireland back in the day and um, but that one i think is what the mv alfred uses so the mv alfred is um is a ferry from orkney um, so it's from Pentland Ferries in Orkney. So it doesn't look like a Calmac ferry. It isn't owned by them. It's red and white. Boo, hate red and white, Sunderland. Um, but yeah, so that one there is on a lease. 
I think for nine months, so most of this year, and it's a million pound a month, CalMac, Scottish Government, CMAL, um, are paying for it because they can't procure ferries very well themselves. They can't build the ferries very well themselves. That's all I'm going to say here. I'm not going to make it too political. Um, but yeah, that is the big thing with this route. Um, it has become known as the ferry fiasco. Um, lots of people have different thoughts on either side. Basically, what do you think of the Scottish National Party, the SNP? is sort of how it goes down. Um, but yeah, so what you've got is two ferries that were built. Well, actually, they weren't even intended to both be for this route. The MV Glen Sanix, um, which was the one intended to, uh, for this route, I think the original plan uh, back in 2018, when it was supposed to come in, supposed to be built in service in 2018, um, uh, that ferry was supposed to be uh, joining the, the MV Caledonian Isles, which I'm on today. Um, so the Cali Isles will become the second vessel on this route. This is the busiest CalMac route on the whole network. Um, so, and, and it is, it does feel very busy. It feels like a normal, oh my dear, somebody's just pulled up. Please don't pull up right beside me. I'm trying to do a video. Um, but yeah, so basically you've got the MV Caledonian Isles would have been become the second vessel to the Glen Sanix. The other vessel, Hull 802, uh, yet to be named, was actually going to be for the UIG Triangle. Uh, so that's from um, Sky, the Isle of Sky which is joined by a bridge, um, and that would go out to the Outer Hebrides, to Tarbet, and to um, Loch Maddy um, on North Uist as well. So that was the intention. The intentions, because they're so late, they've actually went off to Turkey to a shipyard, and there are two ferries being built, probably going to be four, actually. It's, I think they've, uh, they've signed their options. It's a bit like a football team, isn't it? They had an option for two more ferries. So there's four ferries going to be built in Turkey, and actually, there's a possibility that Hull 802, which was supposed to come in in like 2018 as well, um, that might be beaten by the ferries that have just been ordered last year in 2022. Um, but they're going to do a bit of a reshuffle. So the two ferries built at Ferguson Marine by the uh, Scottish government, um, well, not by the Scottish government, you know what I mean, procured by them. Um, the second vessel, Hull 802, is actually going to join the Glen Sanix on this route. So there's going to be two identical ferries on the Aran route. I don't know what that means for the Cali Isles. I don't know where it's going to end up. Please go to Mull. That would be a very nice thing. Join it with the Isle of Mull. That'll look lovely as well. Go on. How are you? Do that, Calmac. It would be lovely. Um, but yeah, you've got your two um, identical ferries. They don't know what they're going to be called yet. They've actually um, Caledonia Marine Asset Limited, um, who own all of the ferries. Calmac are the ones that run them. This is so boring. This is five minutes of absolute dross. Skip to the bit of the ferries if you're bored, by the way. Um, but Cal CMAL have just put out um, a vote for the ferry's name. Um, there's three, Glen Rosser, um, the MV Claymore, and another Glen. Totally forgotten its name. Um, I reckon everybody will go for Glen Rosser because Glen Sanix and Glen Rosser sound good. But I voted for MV Claymore because that's an old CalMac name, and that's what it should be. Uh, Claymore Pioneer, these are great old CalMac ferry names, but they'll never get picked because people have got no sense of history and tradition, have they? Um, so it'll probably be Glen Rosser, and that'll be joining this. Long story short, um, basic, well, I'm going to keep talking actually, aren't I? Um, what's going to happen is when the Glen Sanix, hopefully later this year, 2023, comes in a service, they're going to move their operations from here at Ardrossan to Troon. So there's already a temporary port set up at Troon. Troon used to be the, you know, the port that used to go, p &O used to use that to go to Northern Ireland, to Lawn. Um, but that, there's a link span and everything there already waiting. Um, but basically, they're going to move their operations temporarily to Troon. So all of the lines and that are painted in the waiting area and everything there. And then they're going to do a huge upgrade to Ardrossan. So Ardrossan, the time that you're watching this, might be look totally different. So I'm going to have a little walk around. That was six minutes of your life that you'll never get back. I'm going to have a little walk around and I'm going to do a bit of exploring and watch the ferry come in.
Well, I've been speaking about the MV Alfred. I hope you can hear. I forgot my stupid microphone. Um, but there is the MV Alfred on the Irish berth and doesn't look to be going anywhere actually. Um, so I don't know what timetable that bad boy's on at the minute. Um, but I'm just going to wait for my ferry, hopefully. If not, my, my car's is ages away from here. So I need to run back if I see the other ferry. But I don't think this one's going anywhere soon anyway. So let's have a little look around.
flipping heck. I've just got back to the car, uh, just in time to board. Come on. The kid next to me was absolutely hilarious. He was like, that's magic. Well done, mate. You'll be me in 20 years time. It's all downhill from now. Right, we've been told to stay in the cars because we are on the mezzanine deck. So if it's a very busy sailing, they've got like, I'm on a rack, you can't tell at all. I'll spin it round for you. So like, this is like half the height and they put all of the short, well, the not tall cars on this and then they keep us lifted up um, and then cars can drive underneath as well. Proper cool, very busy sailing though. You can't tell, but we're moving up. We're the back of the, the, the mezzanine deck and we're moving up. So we're on the ramp bit. Yo yo, getting flashed out, yo yo. Right, I'm here on the bow, just watching the rest of the unloading. Absolutely class. Every ferry should have a bow viewing area like this. That's literally the captain and that. There's the bridge. It is so close. I mean, that is barely my height, six foot three. That is barely my height above. That is an unbelievably good view. All ferries build this. This is what we want. Um, but yes, I'm feeling very self-conscious, so I don't think I'll be doing much talking. Um, you've just seen the little walk up from deck three, uh, which is the mezzanine. So deck two will probably be the main car deck. Um, and um, I think there is another deck on the top. But if it looks like, if it's like the island mall, there'll be one at the stern um, on the back. So I'm going to have a little look down there, but I probably won't do much talking. And I'll just do some lovely, beautiful shots the way over to Avon.
as you can see, there is absolutely loads of outdoor space. Of course, just as I start recording. Lovely fossil fuels coming out of there. Um, the longest safety announcement on planet Earth. Uh, wouldn't be Karl Mark without that, but fair enough. Um, telling you all you need to know if the thing goes overboard. Um, get yourself in a lifeboat, basically it. Yes. Um, but yes, we are, as you can see, just about to set off. We've still got um, a couple of the ropes attached, um, but so much outdoor space, so much. Every single ferry, if you're building a ferry, build it like this. This is the gold standard. I know it's built in 1993. I know it's like a year older than me, but this is the gold standard. So much outdoor space. You can see why there's about a thousand passengers can be allowed on this. I don't think it's full full, but it's pretty much nearly there. And yet um, everybody's still got loads of space, loads of seating as well. Um, Stenoline and p &O over at Northern Ireland, you should take note of this as well. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy the rest of the sailing without chatting much. Sai Gregory, oi oi! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
right. So here we are coming into Bronick Bay. Um, we've got um, the Isle of Arran there, obviously, just straight ahead. And as people say, in Scotland in miniature, uh, you've got the amazing uh, mountains, and they are proper mountains, like just as big as anything in England. Um, you've got Goat Fell there, the tallest one, and uh, over there at the north of Arran, you'll have Glen Sannox and the Saddle, great walk. And then just up there, you've got the mainland, the start of the Mullican Tyre. Spinning round, you've got the Isle of Butte there in the distance. And then even behind that, you'll have the mainland. So the, the bit furthest in the distance is mainland Scotland. You can see all of the mountains there. And then sweeping round, you've got Great Cumbrae and uh, Little Cumbrae there. We've done a, we've done a, a video of Millport. Um, that's Millport right over there in the distance on Great Cumbrae and the ferry over to that. There's the wake of the Caledonian Isles, amazing uh, journey this, just 55 minutes. And there we are looking back over towards Ayrshire, where we've came from, or Drossen, uh, right over there in the distance. Sweeping around, you've got Irvine, Troon, and then all the way down to Ayr, where we're staying, where I'm staying. And then right over there in the distance, we've, Elsa Creek's just uh, hid behind Holy Island there. You've got Holy Island, um, which is just off Arran. And then we are coming in to port. Well, I've just ran down to the car deck. I think I was probably the last person getting into my car, um, although there was still a little bit of a chorus of car alarms. My days, we just need to have a button, a ferry mode maybe on, on cars, but also just leave it unlocked. Like, well, you've probably got stuff in it, so that's the reason why. People lock their cars, and then the whole things go ding dong, ding dong, all the way uh, across the crossing. Uh, but yeah, had an absolutely class time there. What an absolute joy. Um, so I just saw a really good old friend there, uh, Cy and, uh, and Jenny Gregory's wife and the three kids and their lovely little dog. Um, it was absolutely amazing. He just went, oh, who's that weirdo filming? It's obviously going to be Craig Bryant on a ferry. Uh, so Cy and Jenny, I hope you have a lovely time on the Isle of Arran uh, on your holiday. Lovely to catch up, lovely to chat. Uh, guys, thank you so much uh, for watching this video as well. If you've liked it, uh, please give it a like, please leave a comment, and uh, please subscribe for more of these terrible videos, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.